Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is JP here at Websites for Beginners. This is a first look video at the shortcuts bar within Bloxy Premium. We'll take a look at that very shortly. Just a disclaimer, if you hear a sound in the background, I've got a fat cat here on the left breathing very deeply. She's very much engaged in a dream somewhere in slumberland. So if you hear that, it's not me going off my trolley, it's just her having a very good deep sleep. In fact, I count four of them, four cats and two dogs under the table. I'm surrounded by love. Great way to work. It's a cold morning here in the Western Cape in South Africa, and I hope for you guys up there in the Northern Hemisphere, you're enjoying the summer. I know I've heard from many, it is extremely hot in some places at this moment. Let's get into what is the shortcuts bar. The shortcuts bar, and I should have actually had a demo for you here ready, is a bar that's going to be permanently displayed at the bottom. I think it's a super cool feature, especially if you have some social icons that you want permanently displayed or you have some links that you want permanently displayed. I'm not going to talk too much about it. Otherwise, it's like talking about something and, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words and all that jazz. And here is an update. Let me quickly have a look. It's probably going to be Bloxy that's got an update for us. Super. Every time there's an update recently, there's a new feature. Love it. Nope. This is WP Forms Lite. So we're going to ignore that one. Let's get into the shortcuts bar. First, you have to activate it. This is a premium feature, which means you're not going to get it in Bloxy free. Something you will need to go find and subscribe to. Check out the link in the description below. Then, you're in the navigation sidebar on the left and Bloxy, you can just click on Bloxy. It will take you into the Bloxy dashboard and then hop over to extensions and then you will notice pro extensions. This may sometimes slip your eye because you just see this focus and you'll go down here and look for these and you're like, what's going on? This happened to me previously with the white label. It's easy to overlook the pro extensions. Simply click on it and you have everything here that comes with Bloxy Premium. Shortcuts bar, baby. Click on activate. It's going to install this extension for you. And the question Sally has is, why are these guys not activated by default? Well, it causes code loading. It brings in a little bit extra script. You know, some of them are bigger than the others. And you want your website to be as lean as possible. At the same time, there are features here that you may just need for your website. So you have no choice. You have to activate them. And, you know, if you don't need them, don't use them. It's not a matter if you don't use it, you lose it. They are still there. You can just deactivate them later on and then reactivate them. Great. So it has been activated. Now let's go into the customizer. And I'll just go over to appearance, click on customize. And now we go into the customizer. See, I'm trying to keep using these words. Scroll down here and you will find that under extensions, we have the shortcuts bar now. Normally, if no extensions have been activated, this area will not even appear here in the editor on the left. And you will think, how does it work? Well, you may have noticed our homepage now displays this black bar here at the bottom. And in it, there's a homepage, little... I guess that's a home icon. And then here is a telephone. Very cool. I just want to remind you, this is a first look video, which means I've not dived deeply into this. It's exploration for both you and I, you know, we don't know what we're going to discover along this journey. I may mess it up. I may just have success. Click on shortcuts bar. And if you're familiar with the Bloxy theme, what's great is you know that all your content settings you're going to do here under general. And then when it comes to design like colors, it's going to be done under design. These two tabs. The reason I mention that is because I think let's just make this shortcuts bar white so we can see it much better. So I'll click on design. Let's see what we've got here. We've got normal font control. And where would container background here at the bottom? And let's just choose the swatch. Great. And what I like, you see the icons automatically also switch. We've got font color, icons color, items divider. And that's the little one in the middle. So let's just have a look here while we add it. You've got four options, none. You've got these little dots and then you've got the dashes. 
Okay, so let's keep it on dashes and then you have items divider height currently set to 40 pixels. So if I increase this to 100%, you're going to see it's going to stretch the entire bar of that. And then let's take it back to 40%. Of course, the logical thing to understand about the shortcuts bar is that this shortcuts bar, just click here on reset, is going to remain at the bottom of your screen at all times. So if I grab and scroll, you will see the shortcuts bar remains at the bottom. It's basically a content box or a modal that remains at the bottom of the screen. Great. And it allows you to bring in those shortcuts. Click back on general. Let's see what we've got here. Type. So this is type one, which we're going to call classic. And then type two, which we're going to call rounded. Ooh, type two. Pretty neat. Like it. Let's leave it on type two because this is actually easier for us to see in this first look. Shortcuts. So we can add email, scroll to top or custom. Now, if I add an email, let's click here on add. Let's see how that's going to work. Good. So we have an add function here. And let's go to the email item here. You, know, you can disable it, hide it. And then from the drop down, you're going to be able to change the icon. Let's see, change icon. And I'll type in mail. Let's choose this one here. Oh, that's very small. So the at is actually a very good feature. Let's change it again. Uh, where is the icon? Over here. Choose the at again. That's a good setting. Default setting works. And then you add the email here to where you want to send it. So in my case, I will have it at indaba.w4b.io. So when people click on this icon, it's just going to open their email manager and it will send it to this email address. Same for the phone. There's the phone option, phone number, and then you have your home page. Let's delete these because I want to see as we delete them whether they will go back to this shortcuts drop down. Delete, delete, delete. And for all intents and purposes, they should be there. There they are home, phone, email, scroll to top and custom. So let's bring back. Bring back my girls. Add home, phone, and we had set up the email, add that one, and then you have scroll to top. Just remember this website, which is the persona starter site within Bloxy, you can see already it has a scroll to top button there. So if you're going to bring in the scroll to top, don't do it twice. Don't be that desperate. But let's add it to see how it looks. There's the scroll to top. And that one, of course, will need to go to the right. So if we're going to scroll to top, it is on the right at this moment, but I'm going to delete it. And then let's see what custom is all about. Custom, drop down. You can bring in a link. So if you have maybe a jump link to a specific part on your site, a pop-up maybe, or any other website or external source that you want to take it to over here. And note, the amazing part here is that, for example, let's say the home part you don't want on a mobile display. You go to the settings and then you just click here and it will take it out visibility for mobile devices. Here is the tablet. So you have control over that with these visibility settings. Super. Love it. Crazy about it. Label visibility. What is label visibility? What am I missing here? I don't see labels. Label icon visibility. Let's click here on desktop so I can see what is a label visibility. Ooh, oh, okay. This activates the visibility of the label. So whatever name you give the label will appear. And that is, again, a cool feature because if you go to the mobile view and you have the label on, it may just be way too squashed. Eh, actually, not bad. I like it. it's very visual. However, if you have a long label there at the bottom, you know, phone me for your pleasures and needs, then definitely you're not going to be able to squash all of that in there. So you're going to deactivate the label visibility. Let's jump back to desktop. And remember one of the cool features, it is such a basic standard feature that I think should be, it should be part of Development School 101. If you don't know how to implement this, no one should be allowed to graduate. And that is a reset function. It was just one of the themes that could do reset 
to default value very well. And I know I've spoken to developers that say, just put in a value you know. And I said, but the one you gave me is a good starting block. It's a, you know, it's something I get used to and, I, and um, I'm used to the theme. So I understand the default of the theme. And sometimes you work from that anchor. So you want to go back to the default. And thank you, Bloxy. I know I'm waxing lyrical over the reset function, but look at how many page builders and themes out there on the market cannot do this basic thing. Good. Scroll icon size. This is self-explanatory. And again, look at this. Amazing. I just love responsiveness. Great. Everyone who's developing for Gutenberg WordPress editor, please, guys, the only thing you need to do at this moment is work on responsiveness. Forget all the smart la -di da features. Just get responsiveness right. This is the main feature. Container height. Okay, now this thing you can make big, which is going to be super crazy. Rather, you would probably want to make it not that tall. Again, the container height default value 70 pixels seem to work for us. And then you've got control again over your responsiveness. Then you have maximum container width. So if you want to constrain that, here would be a nice option to have it maybe flush to the left, middle, or right. You know, similar to a pop up modal block, it would be cool to have maybe align it to the left, align it to the right. Well, you know, just thinking out loud here. Let's also reset that. Scroll interaction, none, and hide. What is this? Let's put it on hide. Scroll. Ooh, okay. So whilst you are scrolling, it will hide. Uh, when you go up, it comes back. Likey, likey. And none gives us permanent display. Super nice. And then you're at the very, very bottom. This is, if you've worked with Bloxy from the very beginning, in terms of headers, then you will understand how conditions work within Bloxy. So you have this shortcuts bar, but perhaps you don't want it to appear on each and every page out there. So you add a condition here. You can tell this shortcuts bar where you want it to appear on specific pages only, your entire website, as well as user conditions, whether a person is logged in or not, and also depending on their roles. In a lot of cases, I think, if I look at it, it's already set to entire website. This is going to be the default setting, and that's probably how you will be using it. Just remember then, this is where your shortcuts bar will appear and the settings within the editor of the theme. If you do not wish it to appear, you need to go and deactivate the extension within the Bloxy dashboard we saw before. Let's publish it. and. Go and view it on the front end. I'll exit the customizer. Let's go view the site. And there it is at the bottom. And I always like to do this little bit of test for responsiveness. I'm going to use a developer's app called Polypane. You can check the link in the description below. And let's increase the size a little bit here. So we've got an iPhone 12, iPad, and then we've got an HD display here. And if I drop this, we can see these devices next to each other and how the website looks, as well as the shortcuts bar at the bottom. Pretty neat. Let's navigate to About Us. Click on the Home. And it takes us home. Okay, so we know that shortcut works. This one, of course, is going to give us email. Here you will have to add a telephone number. What is this one? Oh, this is the custom one we created. We didn't put in anything there. And this is the permission request because we want to send an email with that one. Just close this one out. Great. And that fellow website for beginners enthusiasts, that is the shortcuts bar within Bloxy Premium. A first look here at websites for beginners. A lot of new features actually rolling out for Bloxy at this moment. We'll have a number of first look in the coming days and weeks. And then you can also check out sometimes we have vid documents. And the difference between the two is like in this first look one, we just, you know, browse around and poke and press buttons and hope we don't break the internet. Yeah, right. And in the video documents, it is more of a standard operating procedure, your SOP and and how you should go about using it. It's more like a tutorial lesson. From me, JP, have a great weekend. Stay safe 
and see you in the next video.